Thank God it's now time for your favorite part of the show. Enough of that fucking drab and dreary whatever we're talking about. Hell's Gate bullshit. <laughs> you know it's all made up. Dan's just <laughs> talking about his ass. Get to the stuff ass. you really care about. <laughs> and that is Space News. Um, all right. So what do we got here? First up, we've got NASA confirms what they suspected about Jezero Crater on Mars all along. Um, Which is? Basically that water at one point helped shape it. <laughs> <laughs> that there was water on Mars at one point, yes. Um, so you you know what? Like going into this, I'm like, would I be surprised later on? Like you know, as we start to study Mars, that you know we maybe find some surface water, um, seemingly somewhere, you know, in a deep crevice cave or something. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, we found it on the moon. It's on the moon now. It's water on the moon. Yeah, I mean, we've got Perseverance rover on there now, uh, which landed there in February, and it's been doing its job, uh, Perseverance and its little helicopter buddy. And they uh, have been kind of rolling around in this crater, uh, the Jezero crater, and from what they can tell now, I mean, they've pretty much been able to, which is pretty neat, they can now confirm um, in certain areas of the crater that they've they've been to that they had suspected there had once been a river there that fed a lake and then which deposited sediment into what you can see from actual space. It seemed to appear like a fan shaped delta inside the crater itself. So um, like the, the pictures that they've take, the high resolution photos that they've been taking, you know, reveal layers uh, within the cliffs, uh, which reveal how the formation actually took place. Uh, NASA astro NASA astrobiologist Amy Williams and her team uh, in Florida had found similarities between those formations uh, that can be seen uh, on the cliffs uh, from the crater floor and patterns from actual from river deltas on Earth itself. So a lot of it is just kind of being like, well, it happens on Earth, happened on Mars, and and this and and yeah. We have a. If you look on the screen right now, we have a. There's an illustration of what the lake, uh, in the crater and the rivers flowing to it may have looked like, uh, when they did hold uh, an abundance of water. Uh, you know what? The one thing I always forget, and it always never amazes me, whenever you read about how big the rover is. It's huge. It's, it's really big. It's, I, it's gigantic. I always think like it's a little thing you can pick up. Like, oh, look no. at our little robot. Yeah. What's that? What's it's that like little a fucking monster truck. <laughs> what's that little robot? Um, sir, oh, Short Circuit. Oh, uh, Johnny Five. Johnny Five. That's what yeah. I think of when I think of... Johnny Five's a... even bigger than you actually think he is. He's, well, he's pretty... He's... He, he's pretty big. But right. he still pales in comparison to the the, the rover on Mars. Monster truck yeah. perseverance or whatever. Yeah. yeah. They just um, basically retrofitted Gravedigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rawr, just roaring across the floor. <laughs> uh, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Come see Perseverance. Crush Mons Olympus. Yeah. <laughs> Watch Perseverance jump the the, the, the Gizarro crater. <laughs> Sunday. Um this this next article here is great. Uh, nuking an asteroid to prevent Armageddon could actually work. Study shows. So that's you know that just gives credence to the film Armageddon as a uh, documentary. Documentary um, <laughs> that this in fact would work. Um, I don't know why they say in this article that it was the like this would be a last line of defense. I'm like, I feel like we should be if if the, something's on its way. I feel like we should be trying this like early on. Well, the only problem with this one is that they were talking about that it, even though that is, it is possible that they're saying that um, what they're labeling uh, late time small body disruption, essentially, like if you had a, uh, if you had a large asteroid and you had very little time to, and by little time, I don't mean like days, I don't mean like minutes or nothing. It's like they, by little time, they mean like months. If you had like six months, if you had less, you know, maybe less than six months to formulate a plan and get something together to do this. Um, they're using this technique of, you know, launching a nuke at it. But the problem is that, yes, you could perhaps uh, reduce, not completely, it, it might not completely eliminate the chance of an impact, but it could reduce the effects 
of the impact to perhaps like, you know, uh, you know, you could reduce the rate of destruction to 0.1% of the original mass. Yeah. Something like that. No, I... um, but there are other like, but for this article, just saying that there are plenty of other plans that they have about, I, I think we talked about them on one. The before. Drill, I think the drill team should be our last effort. Right. Of training, <laughs> Find training, Steve Buscemi out there in space. Training Madness. drillers to be astronauts. I think one of the, one of the more out there ones that I heard and though, though it is, somewhat i don't know it, to be at, like i don't know if it's practical but they said that one is like they would send a uh like a, a probe up there and they would essentially paint the you would paint an asteroid like if the asteroid is heading towards earth you would paint it like white therefore white or if you would paint it like a darker color color therefore it would absorb more solar radiation or more light and therefore slow it down and that could drastically change its actual trajectory like you could do something like yeah. that you'd you well, paint it with a special refractive uh, and, and uh coating on, or something well and, that, and that's the thing too with with these things if something's like lined us up and and we've done the math and the calculations what's well, like you, you know like you move that a day like earth's out of the way you, you yeah. know what i mean like it, it it is one of those things that we're constantly moving so it's like uh i've read reports before and, and you know i hate to say it, but i've watched youtube videos of potential plans in these kind of scenarios and one of the one of the ones i remember watching was that we would send out a um like an array of nuclear weapons like and explode them in sequence as this thing went by because all we're we're not trying to destroy it we're not we're just trying to move it just a little right yeah because the, the, like, yeah, just a the little big early on have, then when it yeah. by by the time it hits the earth that little bit that we've moved it way back there is now exponential. Sorry, Mars, it's coming for you now. Yeah, yeah um, the whole kind of point is that the, the scientists want to move the asteroid as opposed to break it apart because if you break it apart, the chances are that you are going to just get a bunch of, instead of one big impact, you're going to get a bunch of little ones, which could still be potentially catastrophic. And we don't have, even, even with this study that they just did about, you know, if you had six months, uh, or like two months before it's going to crash into earth, you know, you're still getting 0.1% of the original mass. That's still a chunk. That's still a good chunk. And then knowing where that's going to land and modeling these kinds of explosions is really difficult and time consuming, uh, with like the type of software and the stuff that we have available, uh, the modeling software that we have available to us and to our scientists to, to be able to be like, break it apart and then know where everything is going to go and is almost impossible. We are going to get exponentially better in the coming years at tracking these near earth objects uh with the help of like incorporating ai and stuff like that because right now we're only monitoring two percent of the sky right uh it's there's just too much but i think we're gonna that's gonna exponentially increase with uh artificial right. intelligence we do have like there is like a system of telescopes i think it's three or four that they actually have that that's all they do is search for they scan the skies constantly for objects that may or may not like may come close to earth, earth or on a co like a collision course with earth that's all they do and you would probably have a good good warning yeah uh before one kind of um, slip through unless it's really small and that's what they're kind of talking about here it's just if it gets by it's going to be really small if hell was a planet it'd be this exoplanet so hot it rains iron and it may even be hotter than we previously thought uh, basically it's hot uh, we're, we're skipping ahead. We only got like one more minute here of space news. Um, just a quick hit Wasp seventy six B. Oh no, never mind. We're not gonna talk about that. We're just yeah, we're gonna skip Kirk. ahead. Uh, okay. William Shatner is going to space. He's going to space on uh, with Jeff Bezos's company. Um, unfortunately, he was delayed. Um, so Captain Kirk is because there was a gremlin on the wing. Yeah, he's not. There was quite... some thing. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, so it is still planned. He's going to go to space. So good for him. Good Canadian boy. Uh, it gives me hope that maybe one day I will be sent to space as an old man. Um, well, you just got a star in a you know, universally beloved hey, podcast? science fiction series. Maybe it'll be a universally beloved science fiction podcast sure. host in another 30 <laughs> years. Eh, who knows? Yeah. Uh, anyways, we got to get back to the show. That's Space News. I'm Braden. 
That's I'm Dan. Dan. And uh, peace out, y'all. See you next time for the best part of the show. Peace! To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing, follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.